Welcome to Land of House. I'm Seth. Today I am taking a look at the Ingui Engine Pro 2. This e-bike is loaded with features and I want to explore those here today with you. Let's start off with doing an unboxing. I've unboxed several e-bikes before and I have to say this one was packed very well. It had so many zip ties and pieces of foam guarding this bike that it took quite a while to undo them all. But I have to say it was flawless whenever I pulled it out of the box. So thumbs up for the great packaging. This bike really was packaged well. I've unboxed several of these in the past and this one was the best by far. Now, as far as assembly goes, it did take me a little over an hour to put everything together. The most difficult part was putting the tail light on because that also holds the fender up and it's hard to get in there to get those nuts tightened. But the bike was actually pretty easy to assemble. So let's go over those steps real quick. There are two boxes included with this e-bike. Let's go ahead and open these up and see what is inside. There's the extended handlebar. Over here in this box, we have the battery charger. There are the pedals. We've got a little kit with some tools inside and also the front wheel shaft. And this thing is much more robust than I oftentimes see. So it's nice to see that they have included something uh, this well built. Now that I've unboxed this bike, let's put it together. To begin the assembly, I'm gonna start up here at the handlebars. I'm gonna remove this protective little rubber stopper. I'm gonna use an Allen wrench to loosen up and remove the screw here. And then also this metal black washer. And there is a sleeve that is protective. I'm gonna remove that and set it aside. Next, I'm gonna take the extended handlebar piece. Now this is going to be offset a little bit. We'll have to figure out how that's gonna be in just a moment. But for now, I'm going to place this where it needs to be. I'm going to reinsert that black metal washer and get that Allen bolt back in there and then tighten this down. I may have to come back in a moment to uh, readjust this, but for now, let's just get it into position. All right, so what I need to do is bring this up so that I can figure out where it's gonna be in relation to the uh, wheel and the handlebars. So if you look down here, you can see where the wheel is going to be, and I'm able to turn this extended piece a little bit. So what I wanna do is unlock this lever push this down all the way, lock it back, and then I want to judge where the handlebars will be straight on with that uh, tire down there. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my Allen wrench and tighten down right here to keep this into position. And I can open this back up and tighten down that centerpiece as well. Once everything's tight, I replace that little rubber protector, and now this can be clipped back into position, and this tightened down. Now we can move on to the handlebars. Once again, I'm gonna take this Allen wrench, and I'm going to loosen up those bolts here on the very top, and these do have to come all the way off in order to get the handlebar into place. So go ahead and loosen those all the way. I'm gonna bring the handlebar up, get that into position, and once again, this is something that can be adjusted as need be, but for now, I'm going to place this right here in the center and get this repositioned right here and get those bolts back into place. This bike is shipped with two all-metal fenders. I'm gonna install those next. Remove this plastic sheath from it. Now, there are a couple of screws I have to loosen up. The smaller Allen wrench does these two down here. The larger one is going to be up here. Now there's a bolt on the back side of this. Let me get the included wrench. I can hold the back side with this right here and then get the front side loosened up. There's also a light here that's gonna be installed. So I'm gonna take that bolt, go through the light, go through the hole there. Now that I have the fender on, it's time to remove the bolts out of the shipping brace that comes on the front. You can use your couple of uh, tools included to remove those bolts. And then once that's done, this should just slide right on down. May have to pick the bike up a little bit. 
to get that out of there. Uh, there we go. There's a plastic piece that's holding the disc brakes separated. Pull that off, set it aside. Now this is the bar that was supposed to have been shipped as a shipping stabilizer. However, the company accidentally sent the actual axle as the uh, shipping stabilizer. So be sure that the black one goes in here. Otherwise it won't fit into the tire. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that the disc brake is on the same side as the shoe over here. I'm going to pick the bike up, set it in here, and hopefully my kickstand will engage and I can uh, hold this upright. Keep in mind for the center axle, you wanna have the black rod. It's got a little uh, cylinder in here and that's gonna go up against the bearings in the wheel and then you got a washer and then this nut on the outside and that's how the tire is going to be attached. Now it's time to get the foot pedals installed. You'll see there is an R here and it shows which direction to spin. If I find the corresponding pedal, I can then place this right here and begin to spin that in the correct direction. Once I get it on there, I can just spin that hand tight and then I will need to find my wrench right here and get that the rest of the way. Now these pedals can be pressed in and turn to the side. So whenever you're storing this bike, it will be flat on a surface. And whenever you're ready to use them, you just pop them back out and they're ready to go. The rear fender and the cargo rack go hand in hand. And so does the rear tail light because they all kind of connect together. So the first thing I want to do is remove the five different bolts that are on the edge here. So they are quite long and took a moment to remove, but there's one here, here, two on the other side, and then there's also one right here in the middle. And be sure to save the washers as they fall out. First thing I want to do is take the single post on the fender and get that attached down over here with the small bolt. Next, I'm gonna take the storage rack and line that up here so that the four bolts can be placed in here. Let me get all four of those tightened down. This is what the rear fender, the rack, and the tail light look like. Now it took me longer than I was anticipating because I had to get these tiny bolts tightened down here and there is no tool included to do that. I had to use an eight millimeter socket set. All right, the last thing to do is to put the seat on and the assembly will be complete. The seat does have a measurement on the back to allow you to consistently put this where you like it. I'm going to loosen this right here, stick the seat down in, and then uh, for now, I'll just put it at some random position and we'll adjust it whenever it's time to actually ride. Now that I have the bike fully assembled, let's do the initial charge. To charge the bike, there is a plug right here, and this is where you would pop this loose and allow that to accept the plug. So the plug is just going to go into a typical house outlet. So we've got this one right over here. There we go. And I'm seeing a green light down here. And most likely that will turn red whenever I plug this up. Yes, I'm now seeing red down here. When that turns back to green, we will go for our test ride on this bicycle. It took the bike right at three hours to fully charge. Now that it's ready, let's go do a test ride. Now that I have the bike fully assembled and charged, let's go ahead and do our riding test. I have a gravel road that I'm gonna test on first, and then we will hit some dirt, grass, and also hit the pavement and see if we can't uh, see how this bike performs on all of those. All right, before I hop on and ride, I need to adjust the seat. Now, this bike can handle somebody who is about five foot four all the way up to about six foot two. And so let's adjust the seat here to what's gonna fit me. Ah, uh, nice to have shocks. This bike comes with a set of keys, like this one right here. In order to turn the battery on for the initial ride, you have to place the key right in here and uh, turn that battery on.
I'm noticing that these shocks are actually quite springy, which means when you hit a rock, it immediately bumps back up to uh, the high position and it kind of jolts you around. So I may have to see about adjusting those here in just a moment. The seat is very comfortable. I would say it's the most comfortable e-bike seat that I've used to date. So very happy about that. The bike handles gravel fairly well with those big four inch tires. However, it still kind of kicks left and right a little bit. Let's go ahead and do some pavement riding and see how that does. I did manage to get the bike up to 28 miles per hour with the pedal assist on the eighth gear. And uh, as soon as I hit 28, I could feel the motor start to pull and it prevents the bike from going any faster. So 28 miles per hour is as fast as this one will go. And honestly, that's probably fast enough, especially with these big four inch tires. It is also very quick and easy to change the gears. I had no problems with that whatsoever and we've already been 2.4 miles with just uh, the third pass here now if i go ahead and press some of these other buttons here we can see what this will change to so of course the plus button changes the pass to four and five the minus button will bring that back down all the way down to zero the power button is up under here throttle is here of course if I push this button right down here, we see the headlight comes on or goes off. If you come back over here, you can see the tail light. So if I press the brakes, you can see that comes on. And like I was mentioning earlier, the shocks seem to be quite responsive. I've been down to right there already, but they spring back up to uh, max very quickly and kind of give you a bit of a jolt All right, if we want to go through the different information here the other button Goes to there's the odometer the max. So we went up to 28 miles per hour average is 10.9 and so 2.4 and 2.4 are the same here because it's uh, Brand new this is my first ride out. So very cool. I'm about to go up a fairly serious hill up here so let's go ahead and click this into pass five. And I just wanna see what happens if I only use the throttle. Now, in order to use the throttle, you have to kick off and have the bike moving just a little bit. And then you press the throttle and it will go. So let's see what we get here. All right. Let's see if I can balance up this hill. <laughs> All right, I'm only using the throttle, no feeder involved. And it is taking this hill like a champ. It's not a small hill. Let's see if it'll take us all the way up here to the top. <laughs> this is pretty awesome, I have to say. Whoa. Uh, it's going a little slow. Let's see if we make it. <laughs> this is throttle only. It's struggling, but it's making it. Whoa. All right, nice, we did it. <laughs> That's awesome. This is the first e-bike I've had that has managed to get that hill with throttle only.
things that I like and don't like about the bike. First of all, the things that I like. The seat is very comfortable and it has the slit in the middle, so that makes it even more comfortable than just a solid seat. But uh, I could definitely ride on that for a couple hours and not be too tired. The front shocks are very nice to have, although uh, they do have a really quick bounce back and it kind of shakes you a little bit. But I hit several big rocks. Nice to have those front shocks. The back shocks, I didn't really feel as much, but uh, if you hit something quite large, maybe a one or two inch rock, you'll definitely have uh, those shocks kick in and it's very nice. I like how the pedals do not hit the kickstand whenever you back the bike up. That's very nice. I also found myself using this little handle right here a lot. So you can pick up the bike with that handle and it is very good. The brakes, super responsive. The large display is nice to have so you can see how fast you're going. The gears right out of the box shifted up and down just fine. And I noticed that if you're in pass three, four, and five, and you have it in gears one, two, and three, then you can climb just about any hill here in my area at least. I didn't put anything on the basket back here, but I think that I will enjoy having a space to carry things. Now, a few things that I did not like about this bike is that you have to have the key in here under the battery in order for the bike to work. I'm kind of afraid I'm gonna bounce that key out of here. Maybe not, but it's just a fear of mine. Like I said before, with the shocks in the front, when you hit a rock, they bounce back up real quick and it'll jar you. Not to the point that the rock would have, but still definitely jars you. I managed to get this bike up to 33 miles per hour when coasting downhill, but as soon as you start pedaling, it will limit you back down to 28, so keep that in mind. However, on this fat tired bike, anything above 28 really is too fast in my opinion. Now, the one thing that happened the most often, and I was irritated with, I would have my feet too far up on the pedals, and I would actually have the front of my shoe hit the gravel. And so these pedals are very low to the ground. And it's just something I'm gonna have to get used to, but keep that in mind that if you have your feet too far forward on the pedals, you may slap the ground. Now there's one last thing I did not show you, and it's because it's not easy to do. But let me go ahead and show you how this bike folds up real quick. Right here in the middle of the bike is a large hinge. That's also where you can access the battery. But in order to get that to close or open, you pull this lever right here, pop that loose, and now the bike can be uh, separated. And also up here on the handle, if I were to pull this lever up and then pull this down, I'm then able to collapse this as well. So. This would go down here, and then I'll show you how this all works together here. All right, I'm gonna release the lever here on the back, and uh, it's not easy. Let me show you here. So you gotta, it's like it's, I don't know, need some oil or something. Anyway, maybe you get the point there. It's supposed to collapse all the way together, um, but it's not easy. So I'm gonna let you just see it how it is here. Now there is a metal piece down here at the bottom and that will allow the bike to rest up and not fall over once it's fully collapsed. But yeah, I'm not gonna push this any further. It's just not easy to do. So let's see if I can get it back out here. There we go, that should be on. Okay, there we go. Now earlier coming up some of these hills, the battery meter did drop down lower than the first line there, but now it's back up. So it has many more miles left in it. Two more things I forgot to mention. This e-bike has a torque sensor, which is amazing. As you pedal, it will give power to the motor and the harder you press whenever you're pedaling, the more power it gives. So it senses if you're going uphill or trying to go really fast. And that is much better than a speed sensor. And the last thing I want to mention is that the fenders are metal. And so when you kick up a rock, it makes a loud ting sound. And so you just kind of have to get used to that. 
If you want to check out more information on this e-bike, I will have links in the description down below. I'm Seth with Land a House, and I will see you in the next video.